So in section 6.2, number 35, we are trying to verify that functions are inverses of each other by showing that f of g of x equals x and g of f of x equals x. Because if those are both true, then our functions g and function f are in fact inverses of each other. Okay, so on problem 35, we have f of x is 4x minus 8, and we have g of x is x over 4 plus 2. So now in order to verify this, we have to actually find each one of them. So first, let's find f of g of x. That means we take g and plug it into that x value right there. So 4 times x over 4 plus 2, that whole thing minus 8. So do you see how I took the entire function g and I put it in place of just the x in function f? That's what f of g of x means. Okay? Now we distribute the 4 through the parentheses. So we would get 4x over 4 plus 4 times 2 is 8. So 4 divided by 4, it reduces to 1, and 8 minus 8 is 0. What do we have left? X. Does that one check out? Yes. Basically, if two functions are inverses of each other, then one undoes the other one. What one does, the other one undoes. So if you put them together and you plug in X into it, you should get X back out of it, because it's taken X, it's done something to it, it's undone something to it, and it's given you back x. Okay? So let's try now doing g of f of x, because in order for them to be inverses, it has to go both ways. So now we take f of x, and we plug it into that x right there in g of x. So we have 4x minus 8 over 4 plus 2. So I just took this entire function, put it in place of the x in this function, and now I simplify it. So 4 divides into 4 once, 4 divides into negative 8, negative 2 times, and then x minus 2 plus 2 is x. Are these two functions inverses of each other? Yes. Look how kind of they have opposite stuff going on. Instead of multiplying by 4, it's dividing by 4. Instead of subtracting 8, well, it's adding 2, but that's we that's kind of weird, but you have to keep in mind that it's adding 4 instead of multiplying 4. I mean, dividing 4 instead of multiplying 4, so that makes the difference for that 8. So this kind of illustrates that you can't just do, sometimes I have students that think, oh, 4x minus 8, the inverse must be x over 4 plus 8. No, it's not. It's not that simple. Hopefully you watched through the videos to learn how to find those inverses by trading x and y and then solving for y not just as simple as just changing the numbers and the pluses and minuses around.